Oh, jeez, what happened now? I just, I just need more water? I, I just, uh, uh. Oh, hey man, what are you doing? Oh, hey man, well, I was watching this YouTube video earlier about uh, bioactive. Link in description. And so I decided I was gonna set one up, but I don't even know what's happening with it. You think you could help me? Uh, well, man, I'm not gonna lie, it's looking a little rough, but actually, you're in luck. I just watched this video about this guy that did a step-by-step -step instructional video on how to set up a bioactive enclosure. Oh, man, that is lucky. Uh, wh what's the video? Oh, well, it, it, it's this video. Uh, you, you've been watching it for like 20 seconds, dude. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Dakota, I'm the owner of DBCB Exotics, and today we're going to talk a little bit about setting up a bioactive enclosure. So a couple videos ago, I got a request to do a step-by-step -step directional video on how one would set up a bioactive tank. Now, I went back and forth on which species I wanted to be my ambassador for this enclosure, and I ended up wanting to do my baby red-eyed crocodile skink. Uh, he's been with his parents for, I want to say like five months now, and time really flew with him, and at this point in time he's ready to go into his, you know, his own separate enclosure where he can be monitored and live on his own. Just to note, this is going to be a more of a basic setup. I'm not going to go too advanced on it. I might make a later video talking about a little more on the extras you can do to make it a little more, you know, advanced looking. But for now, it's just going to be the basic requirements that you'll need for a bioactive setup. Um, I'll go over a list of the required materials and then we'll get into the step-by-step -step putting one together. Because we're going to work our way up, the first thing you're going to want is your drainage layer. Now this can be made up of a few different things. I've seen people use lava rocks, clay balls, gravel, just large pebbles things of this nature. For this example, we're going to be using hydro balls. Um, you can get these materials anywhere at a garden center, home improvement store, and even pet stores or online. Now going up from that drainage layer, you're going to want to have a separator between drainage layer and your substrate. And for that, right now, I went on the cheap end and just got um, plastic window screening. I got it at Home Depot. Um, I know there's a few other ones, such as like BioDrain and things like that, but this, I got a giant roll for about, I think, $12. It's lasted me uh, well over a year. At this point, you can see I'm running a little low on it and we'll have to go buy another. Of course, most importantly, we're going to need our substrate mix. Uh, the mix I'll be using is a play sand topsoil peat moss mix. Unfortunately, I do just get all my materials and mix them into a large bin, so I'm not going to be able to show you what exactly what the percentage mixture is. However, I still do have some sphagnum moss and orchard bark that I'll mix in. And of course, it wouldn't be bioactive without our microfauna. Today, we're going to keep it a little more basic and just add some springtails and common isopods. And then finally, wrapping it up, we're going to be adding leaf litter. Leaf litter is going to help feed your microfauna and also help them get shelter in case some of the reptiles are predatory towards them, such as like dark frogs and even the crocodile skinks have been known to eat the isopods. Uh, this batch that I have, I just got from my local uh, woods, uh, you know, just conservation land. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you live in a more suburban area or in the city, you can also get them online at places like Any Herb and Josh's Frogs. So today for the enclosure, we're going to be using an exoterra. 12 by 12 by 12. Um, I chose these measurements because our guy is only two to three inches and we are just taking him away from his parents so I'm going to want to be monitoring him closely to make sure he's eating food and keeping his weight. All right so we got our materials, we got our microfauna, let's go ahead and start setting it up. So starting out we're going to be doing our drainage layer. Now we are using the hydro balls like I said. Uh, drainage layer is going to be important because it's going to keep your soil from saturating by draining any excess water in the soil down into the this layer. Uh, for the layer you're going to want about one to two inches. Uh, for this one I made it just a little bit over an inch. Next up, we're going to be adding our separator between the drainage layer and the substrate. Now, it is important to have this 
layer due to the fact that the whole reason of a drainage layer is to allow gravity to get the excess water of that substrate down into its own area, which would allow the substrate not to become saturated. For this, like I said, I just used window screening for Home Depot. You can see I measure it out roughly what it would look like, and then I cut it into two separate pieces. Now, the way the screen gets rolled up, it kind of curves over, so that's the reason why I'm curling it the other way to try to make it and um, straighten it out. Alright, next up is substrate. Like I said earlier, the substrate is a topsoil, clay sand, moss mix, and then you can see I add some ortrich bark and sphagnum moss. Um, the orchard park did have some perlite stones in it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, that's just going to help aerate the soil slightly. Uh, just mix it up real good and then you have it. one little thing of pillow moss available so I decided just to put that in for add a little color and a little more humidity. Uh, right now I'm just sprinkling in the springtails, you're not really going to be able to see them but then later you'll see that I put some of the um, normal isopods in there and you'll see those a little bit. Oh, there they are, cute little dudes. Uh, funny enough I actually had to close the, uh, I had the lid open and I had to close it because these guys were trying to crawl out after the, you know, the two minutes that I put them in. you're thinking now oh my god this guy's the fastest mister on the planet uh, I split this video up about double the amount of time just because it was like a 20 minute video with it just going normal speed uh, for this I'm just moistening the soil real nice I pour some water in later on to get it real uh, nice and moist and then add the leaf litter uh, moisting your soil is gonna be important to when you put the plants in especially if you're uprooting them like I did it's a bit of a shock for them so it's nice for them to have uh, deep moist substrate for those roots to grab onto. Uh, for plants, I just used a couple things of pothos that I had lying around. I didn't go out and buy anything, and I kind of just have my own small nursery right now of a few different plants that I use commonly for my bioactive enclosures. So at this point, you pretty much have everything you're going to need. I just add a few different decorations due to uh, the baby croxing being a very shy, reclusive species. I wanted to add plenty of hides, so I get some cork bark, a large water tub because I do like soaking. Well, large for him, like I said, he is only one to two inches. Uh, I've had some stones laying around, so I decided to make a little temple back there. I thought it'd be cute. One thing to note, depending on the plants that you use, you're going to want to invest in a plant light. Now since I'm only using pothos and they're a low light plant, I just have a CFL plant light in there. And then here's our little guy. I can't believe how much he's grown since I first got him. So now we're going to be putting him inside his enclosure. Uh, you can see he just scurries right down into the leaf litter and that's pretty much all set up. You have your complete bioactive tank. Well guys, there you have it. You have your basic bioactive setup that's gonna meet all those requirements to create a self-sustaining ecosystem. So that about wraps up this video. If you like what you saw, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns can always be put in that comment section. If you wanna see some more of my animals or my breeding projects, you can always follow me at DVCB Exotics on Instagram. And other than that, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.